Hey everybody, it's Alan, and I hope you are doing well. By now, many of you probably realize that Ty Tabor is one of my favorite guitar players of all time. His work and creativity in the band King's X is basically a massive part of my musical listening history over the course of the last 30 plus years. I am absolutely astounded with not only his voice, but his writing technique and, of course, his incredible guitar playing and guitar tone. Well, I want to play you a song from one of his solo albums, and the song is called Until the Day is Done.
I got to tell you, when I first heard King's X, it was the Faith, Hope, Love album. I think I might have heard a little bit of Gretchen Goes to Nebraska before that, but I can't really state that clearly. But it definitely heard the uh, the Faith, Hope, Love album. And from that instant on, I was absolutely hooked with both Ty Tabor's guitar playing and, of course, the band singing. As the years have gone by, my love for the group and for the player have deepened all the way down to the core of my bones, to be completely honest with you. His choice of tones is, in my mind, second to none. I mean, it's just really, truly magical. Whether it's the 1983 Strat Elite that he's famous for playing or the Lab Series L4 amplifier or some of the more modern stuff playing with orange amplifiers and for a period of time there, even Line 6 units. His ability to build a guitar tone, to me, is virtually second to none. And then on top of that, you add his use of drop D tuning or alternate tunings uh, over the course of their uh, his career and, of course, King's X's career. And you get this very, very unique guitar player, in my opinion. Of course, some of that comes from his uh, time period studying uh, you know, other great guitar players uh, growing up in Missouri background of, of course, like bluegrass and folk instrumentation. It's it's in sort of a weird way. And trust me when I tell you, I know this is going to be a stretch of a comment, but in sort of a weird way, there's a tiny bit of a parallel between Ty Tabor's guitar influences and Jerry Garcia's original uh, guitar Trek, you know, starting off as a banjo player, working his way into guitar. Well, again, you know, sort of uh, Ty Tabor's origins sort of backed around the gospel world, um, influenced by other greats. I, 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 I'm, I'm stalling here because I'm blanking of, I'm blanking on the name of his, one of his, oh, Phil Keege, one of his uh, big guitar influences. Um, it, it's just, He's really, to me, just an incredibly magical yet completely underappreciated guitar player. I guess that's why King's X is known to be your favorite band's favorite band kind of situation here. Um, man, God, just love all the tones in that track. I love them all. You know, I don't listen to this album as often as I probably should, but. And again, there are only so many hours in the day, I guess, for you know me to listen to everything I wish I could listen to over and over again. But uh, anyway, with that said, if you haven't heard Ty Tabor's solo projects or paid any attention to King's X, I do urge you to do so. Because to me, they are, and he is, one of the most underappreciated artists by the mainstream rock audience and press that there is, and uh, they truly do deserve their just rewards. Unfortunately, they'll probably never fully come to them, which is why they have a very strong following and legion of fans um, who just, you know, again, listen to everything they do and cherish every moment we have listening to the trio and, again, the individual artists, Ty, Doug, and, and Jerry's uh, solo projects as well. Simple as that. I'm going to end it right here. I know I'm rambling. It's because it's late and I've been doing this all day long. Um, <laughs> hope you enjoyed this. Please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. We can talk about it further. Know that I appreciate all of you and I wish you well. Take care.